sorry guys. Uh, there was some problem with my laptop. It was not displaying. So thank you for from for being okay helping with the laptop. And yeah, uh, myself Kevin Pritzin. I'm presenting my work on physiologically attentive user interface for robot calibration. It's me, Sergey, and two of other professors from Lisbon. We did in last ten months or so. So yeah, here we are. Yeah, I like to I like to start with an example of robot calibration and how difficult or how uh, how much workload or stress these operators feel when they operate these kind of stuff. This is uh, U.S. Army's MQ9 Reaper. So this is the control room of MQ9 Reaper from the control to what the operators we can see controlling MQ9. From this image, you can easily infer how uh, stressful and workload these operators you feel with all those screens and all those controls they, they, they use for just one MQ9 report. Anyhow, uh, uh, the world which we are living in now uh, contains like humans and robots all together working together in one like common environment towards some common goals. But we mostly see a greater number of humans working with less or equal number of robots. So, even though humans uh, control less or equal number of robots, they are more responsible for uh, all those accidents. The humans, uh, human errors are responsible for 80% of UAV's accidents that they do. And uh, this is a bigger concern with growing need for robot teleoperation. Uh, to keep humans away from those difficult scenarios. How, however, currently we have uh, some interfaces which are known as attentive user interfaces that could provide us some our, our, uh, clues, like our clues we have uh, eye trackers or facial uh, emotions or expressions which can tell us uh, attentive state of person, so how attentive or how engaging the person is with the, uh, with the interface. But they are not very much helpful in getting inner emotional state of person. So you can't like really say the person is feeling something which is true by their face. You can say he, he or she is feeling stressful. But we, it, it's not like reliable. On the other hand, sorry, uh, this is an example of attentive user interface. So. Uh, we can see uh, a human, uh, our machine pauses the, uh, the, the video the person is playing when he's not attentive to, to the screen. And this thing is using eye tracker to track human attention in real time. However, on the other side, we have psychophysiological activities that provide a quite hidden and implicit way to understand human cognition. And this <coughs> makes Changes, or we can use those psychophysiological tools to to increase human performance in real time. So what we are doing right now is we are we are using those psychophysiological tools, and we're we're trying to create a new kind of interface that is known as physiologically attentive user interface that infers cognitive state of person and dynamically changes itself in real time to. To, um, to handle those exaggerated emotional states like workload, stress, or, or low uh, resting when a person is not feeling very engaged and feeling bored. So, how we are doing these things? We are working with a, a robot named Raboza. It was designed by ISR, um, like one of its partner, ISR. So this one was designed for um, uh, firefighter search and rescue operations and they use this interface to control this reposer with three screens and lot many sensors which we can't even understand in one, one view. But what we are doing right now is we are actually tackling three difficulties we face in, in these calibrations. So one of them is highly sophisticated systems. These systems are like sometimes very sophisticated, they need extra or very high mental presence as compared to real operations. So if the firefighter has to go and search and do some task, it will be very easy for him. Maybe it's like dangerous, but it's easy as compared to driving a teleoperated robot and search all those areas in those in those like 
and there's risk basis. So what we are targeting is we're try, we trying to reduce the workload in, the, in these cases. We're trying to reduce the stress and uh, try to increase uh, the operator's efficiency in, in, in those difficult scenarios, like having too much workload or something. Second thing what, what we are doing is there are like some windows when the person is not very amazing or he or she has not to do much in, in, in those tasks. So if we can take an example of UAV, so when the person has to fly all the way like 200, 300 miles away from from their uh, their station to, to the targeted place, so he or she not supposed to work much, just drive all the way. So these, these kind of situations can be very, very boring and can create, like, can make those persons very prone to, to accidents. So there is another thing we are tackling here. So we are trying to uh, maintain mental presence of persons in, in all the states. So he, she won't, will not, like, feel very restful and be very like, unattentive in, in, in those windows. And the third thing which we are doing is accessing the existing closed interface. So in, in proprietary applications or in very old applications, we, we have some problems like we have uh, those closed applications. So uh, their code won't give much room to change. So we, we have to like either start from very scratch and design a new application or, or we need to buy the rights to change the code or something. So in that case, what we are trying to do in <laughs> eliminate is to create to create a new application from very scratch. So we already have an uh, interface for Rosa, so which, was which was designed uh, 12 years back. And we don't have that source code that, that could be run very easily and we can make changes and create our own new physiological interface for that thing. So we are, we are um, trying to use something and um, we are trying to use uh, uh, a system which I will tell later to uh, use our older interface and create a new physiological interface over it. So these are the three main uh, issues we are tackling right now. For that, we will revise our approach and we start with physiological signals. So we started extracting physiological signals. Then we uh, we go for facial emotions and expressions. The third thing which we used is eye movement. So we, we used eye trackers to track where the person is looking in real time. Uh, then we, um, we train classifier by using physiological signals and facial features for, uh, for baseline reading, for stressful state, and for workload. However, this baseline is, is more like uh, when person is, uh, is not in normal state, but feeling very Rest, restful and very mm, not very engaging to the system. And then uh, the third thing, uh, the uh, next thing is to encapsulate our older application which we already have with our new physiologically attentive user interface and bridge them with uh, with a system known as Schooly. Schooly is a pixel driven uh, application which we can use. So uh, I have an example to show, but uh, my system is not able to connect with this thing, so maybe if I, if I just show in my, my laptop, so if you can see what this schoolie can capable of. So uh, yeah, I'll just run this thing, like I devise some steps to to do, and schoolie is, will automatically do some things. So if I run this thing. Everything. So it's something like this. And uh, if you want to see more, like if anybody missed something, so I can show them again. So school is something like this. We we, we uh, put some steps to do, and we just uh, not uh, not supposed to be there to know everything. So it will see, uh, you can compare the pictures we, we already mentioned and it will automatically do everything. So we are using Schooly to, uh, to bridge our uh, new interface and our older interface which we have uh, with our program. And then train a classifier for real-time classification. 
Uh, we are using I movements to uh, extract important information from BA and physiological identity user interface and use uh, this classifier and our I movements to dynamically change our physiological identity user interface in real time. So this, this, this is our main target to dynamically change our um, EUI with respect to the emotional uh, state of person. <coughs> uh, so we start with placing our uh, we used three uh, averages for this. So we used vitalinum for uh, physiological signals, uh, ECG, EEG, and EMG, and EDA. We used TOBI uh, for eye tracking and camera for facial emotions and expressions. <coughs> and the place one is something like this. Uh, we put ECG, uh, so positive electrode, and right calcula left on the musculature major and reference on the left ventricula, which is the best out of uh, what I already tried with the other positions. We also tried with these wrist positions, but while driving the robot, we gave very bad results, so we shifted to this thing. Uh, for EDA, we used left arm. And for EEG position, uh, we put positive and negative on the forehead to make the things very simple. So we don't want to use uh, big caps and dolls, so we try to um, build prototype. Okay? We used left ear lobe for reference. Uh, we used uh, left hand that took abductor pervis <coughs> for positive and negative of EMG. And uh, for reference electrode of EMG, we used uh, Head of Puma, which is somewhere here, this bone. And uh, for Toby placement, it should be like uh, under the display screen pointed towards the eyes, and the camera should be pointed towards the face. The face should be visible. <coughs> and the things we collected from, uh, from Vitalino, uh, we uh, processed ECG signal for heart rate, we processed, uh, processed it for uh, SDNN and RMSDD, SSD, uh, which is like heart rate variability. And um, we also collected frequency component, uh, very low frequency, uh, low frequency and high frequency from EEG processed for um, delta, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma um, signals. And um, we calculated engagement level to the help of this paper. And for EDA, we used skin conductance response, and for EMG, we used number of peaks. From Toby, we, we used uh, current uh, XMR position of I and biggest fixation position, so where, uh, which is the most important of all uh, in the screen for the person while driving or doing the task. From camera, we, we used an effective uh, SDK provided by Effectiva that, that's helpful in, in extracting facial and emotional expressions. So they already trained some classifiers to, to extract uh, human features. So we used that SDK and we extracted nine emotions out of it. So like joy, sadness, fear, and discuss engagement also. And, uh, and several expressions, it's like 14 expressions. So the lip positions, how the person is smiling, or how the eyes are in a particular situation. <coughs> After collecting those things, we, we uh, um, yeah, I like to show the architecture, which, uh, which is divided into three uh, sub-modules. First one is emotional state estimator, which contains two sub uh, three sub-modules for uh, data uh, collection and processing from all three uh, hardware. So, data um, like from so they collect the data in RAR, uh, the raw data and process it for um, all the um, features I showed, and then provide uh, those uh, process data to classifier. So our beta you know, and camera module will provide the data to the classifier, uh, and that classifier will process for um, the space-time stress and workload state. State it identifies uh, the state using the classifier the trained classifier and then provide that data to the second layer which is identity user interface and then Toby directly provide the um, data to the identity user interface here. This identity user interface here will do all the dynamic changes to the, to the uh, interface. It will um, like 
decide like what to do in workload state, what to do in resting state. And it also shows uh, the information from the older interface and also give information to the older interface that what to change next and what to do next. So on the other hand, we have our older interface, which I showed you before, which deals with the reposer. So to bridge this gap, we, we designed a third layer, which is system integrator, which contains one feedback extractor that extracts all the feedback data from, from Roboza, like uh, images which the camera is showing, or the sensor information it is showing. So it will send all the information to our uh, interface, and it will show those information to the user. So our older interface will stay in the background, so the person will not be able to see, but will deal with the new interface. And we have the second SCULI there, which I, sh uh, which I showed you, and the SCULI um, thing. So uh, our authentic user interface send all the changes which it requires, like uh, slow the speed or limit the speed for the person. Uh, so it sends it to the SCULI, and SCULI will send it to the older interface, and will interact uh, dynamically in real time. So our PUI contains these uh, emotional status layer, identity user interface layer, and the system integrator layer. Uh, what we uh, then did, we, we trained the classifier, <coughs> which we used in this module. So we separately trained the classifier in Python, and uh, which runs, uh, which averages data for three seconds, and then uh, classify that emotion, uh, emotional state of the person using the Talino and Camera layer. <coughs> yeah. So how we did our experiments? Uh, we divided the experiments into two uh, different modules. So we did virtual experiments with, uh, with games. Uh, for that, for baseline, we <coughs> put the person just to watch a black screen. We also tried some other stuff, but this is uh, the, the best we get from the results. The best results we get from this, this uh, experiment. And for resting, we put the person to play a customized type screen, which is like it's customized to be very, very hard. And uh, the third, uh, for the workload, we put the person to play in, in, in a simulator in rings of rods. So we have like a lot of vehicles, different vehicles to, to drive around. So the task is to drive from one point to the other, and uh, we increase the workload with, with um, um, gear automation. So it will start with the automatic gear shift, then it will semi-automatic, and then to the manual shift. And uh, yeah, it, it gave us uh, very nice results. On the other hand, we used a uh, robot calibration experiment. So we tested with real robot. Uh, and for baseline, we put the person just to drive around, like, just to drive in a straight line from one end to the other end in a very slow speed. So we can make the person very boring and very tiring. And for the stressful state, um, the task of the person is to, um, like, uh, there were designed uh, three scenarios, three um, environments, uh, which are very difficult to, to, to drive in. So the, the task is to finish the, ta uh, the drive task in that environment within five seconds. And mostly we see people are not able to finish. And uh, in the workload, uh, the person has to search five things in an environment. It's a home-like environment designed in uh, ISR Lisbon, so it's more like a bedroom, um, a kitchen and all. So the person has to search five things and uh, alongside has to answer some arithmetic problems in this way. Like it starts with two numerics and then uh, has to remember the last answer and keep on answering it and using new uh, uh, data. So these, these are the experiments we did and we got some nice results for it. I like to show some engagement data which we, which we got from stress. So this is uh, what we got from stress task. And on the other hand, on the, on the baseline, the results are very low. So it will clearly reflect the change we got from both experiments. The person is not doing much. So his engagement uh, data is, is very low. And on the other hand, when the, when the person is playing that Tetris game, so the engagement is very high. Uh, then we 
we do the classification thing. So we train our classifier. For that, we divided our data into three sub, uh, sub uh, packets for virtual uh, for the virtual experiments. We did it with two tests and divided into 70-30 ratio. Mm -hmm. Uh, under the real experiments, we used five test subjects and divided the whole data into 70 30 ratio. And we also did uh, the real, uh, the person specific test. So, in that, we used real data from just one person and used uh, and divided that data into 70 30 ratio and trained on classifier and tested how we get all these different uh, data and how the classifier showed the result in these cases. Uh, we trained uh, two different classifiers. <coughs> uh, we trained uh, KDR Rest Neighbor and got quite good result in, in virtual experiments, 77.63% for real experiments with, with five people, we got 79. And with person specific, just one person, we got 82.95% of accuracy. And we also trained our support vector machine which gave us like 80% accuracy in virtual uh, data. With 5% people uh, in real experiments, it gave 84%. And with just one person, it gave 88.37% data. So we did our person-specific test to identify how we do our data will deal with like with just person, how variable it is if we use like seven different objects together. And in conclusion, uh, uh, what we did is we proposed the physiological attentive user interface uh, for robot time equation, which is a very new thing, never did before. Uh, developed a classifier for, physio from, for physiological data and yeah, for resting stress and workflow. Resting is like, um, it's more like baseline, and person is very way too restful. And we evaluated our uh, results with virtual games and robot, uh, real robot scenarios. Uh, results we got, we got like 70, 84.75% uh, with S SVM, which is quite good in, in that case. And our future uh, perspective, we are working towards in integrating that classifier in, in the whole architecture. So currently we have all the modules running, we just have to place the classifier and do the real time testing. We're also working with uh, deep neural networks, and uh, currently we are getting 90% accuracy with the same data we, we trained here. So we're looking forward to that thing also to train some good architecture in deep neural network and got some more accurate results, maybe 90 plus. Uh, that's all from my side. So very good questions. Good question. Yeah, we're also thinking about that thing also. Uh, 
yeah, we got some good feedback with the paper we published. So we have have to evaluate things, and we are also looking forward to use start with one sense uh, one feature and move on with, with all the features and see how things are changing. So we are also thinking about that. It was very clear for everybody. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Something that might save you time. Uh, there's, uh, you can train your, your system to classify with dead data, mm -hmm. but they already used uh, from other stuff. There's a database with physiological data and eye tracking data and camera data from the Geneva affected computer lab. They have a database uh, with all the with all set of data. Like an EEG, so we call the feature. So you might use, you can use the to train also in uh, So yes. you, can, you can refine your model. And especially if you want to go with the uh, deep neural network, which is a challenge with the show that that might also help uh, building a better uh, way. So they have all those like EEG and eye tracker data they have eye together? Track. Yeah. The same thing. Yeah. yeah. They have, uh, I think they're tagged with data for, uh, for balance and erosion. So they're tagged. You just have to think Yeah, system. I checked the Geneva thing and they used all the images to, to get the, the balance and the rest of it. Okay, but this is, yeah, this is <coughs> the image, it's just the, the yeah, I didn't know about the, the data. I know about the database of the images data. So I have that. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.